I've been busy. Busier than ever. Even though my first mission didn't go so well, I was somewhat successful. So Matilda gave me another chance and has made me an official Morrow's Peak Outpost Merchant. I've been supplying my home island with everything. Random tools and objects for Tad's shop. Cloves and silks for Chester. This time I try my best to keep them nice and dry. Weapons and ammo for Wednesday's store. Some grog for Tallulah's tavern. Which is most difficult in my opinion because of the delicate glass bottles. But I do enjoy it. The payouts are not the greatest, but they keep me on the seas. So far, I've sailed to a few places nearby for some shipments. My favourite was Roaring Traders, because <laughs> Eleanor makes me laugh. She said she used to be a jester before working here, and I believe it. No, it had been a fortnight with any shipment requests, and I uh, needed gold. I didn't know what to do. You know, I thought of looking elsewhere for work, something different, but I just wasn't sure. Bevel, come here, me lassie. I see you got yourself a ship. I, I would need your help to pick up a certain chest of goods. Sorry, not interested. You're not interested in being very well rewarded. I didn't trust Hyde, but I was curious. How well rewarded? It was good enough for me, but I had some planning to do and supplies to get before this trip. I grabbed the cloth from Chester and some old tools from Tad. Wednesday gave me a sword as a gift and made me promise to use it. I told her I'd do my best, but I didn't think I'd need to. I was walking to my ship, ready to leave, but I heard Madame Oya's voice talking about me. Tread lightly to your journey, little rock, for there may be bones that creep when your flesh be on your feet. She gave me shivers, but I didn't think of it anymore. I sailed away once again. But this time the mission was different. It wasn't clear on the contents of the cargo, but I knew where I was supposed to be. It were a good ways away. I was wee nervous and scared of being far from Morrow's Peak. But let me tell ya, the moment I sailed away from the usual darkened waters of Devil's Roar, I well near whipped from the overwhelming marvel. I thought I had seen every color but here, my eyes felt born again, my sight polished. It was beautiful and magical and stunning. I couldn't stop looking at the waters and the skies. I was mesmerized by its beauty. I thought of the years I had lived without seeing all of this, and I was saddened. But just as quickly, the view of where I was at the moment brought a rush of excitement again through my body. This is where I belonged. These were the seas that felt like home. While the water and winds played gently, I took a moment to calculate the voyage on the map down in the hold. Now, if I measured everything right, it would take a few days of sailing. I would port for the night and continuously sail during daytime. That was the plan. It was a fine first tale of sailing. The winds were good and the waters were fair. With my spyglass I kept a lookout for bad weather. Everything seemed clear. But wait! Circling birds? It could only mean one thing. Something or someone was there. Maybe a lifeless fish? Perhaps a ship? Reckoned in the waters. I wonder if there was someone in need of help. I had to go find out. I anchored near enough and called out. Hello! Nothing. No one answered back. 
What if someone were stuck underwater? I waited a little longer. Hello? Still nothing. I couldn't make out what was underneath the busy waters, but it looked like a ship by the size of it. I jumped in the salty waters, took in a deep breath, and dove downward. It was a ship, and it wasn't too far down to quickly venture my way through the sunken beast. Even though my vision was blurred, a bright, red glowing rock floating silently caught my eye. I reached out, grabbed it, and made me way back for air. I truly wondered what it was, this odd glowing rock. Maybe I could find someone on my way that would know something about it. I continued swimming, but suddenly, something else was near. Visiting the wrecked ship, something I did not anticipate. A shark! Its fin was out of the water, and it was coming towards me. I dropped the glowing stone and swam as fast as I could back to the ship. Blimey, what was that? I stopped and looked back. The shark was dead. Floating and farther away was a man in a rowboat holding a gun. I continued to swim and climbed up the ladder to my ship. I waved to a stranger. A stranger who had just saved me life. The man rowed his boat closer. Ahoy! My name is Henry Hook. Now that's not my usual style of fishing, but I had to hill. I, I give you me thanks. Henry Hook was a fisherman. When I asked him if he'd had ever been attacked by a shark, he simply chuckled. We fished together, and then he showed me how to pan fry my catch to perfection. He was maybe a good fisherman, but he was a great cook. Mm -hmm. We ate and drank as we chatted about where we were from. When I told him how I got this ship, his eyes widened slightly and told me that he had met old Tim a few times. I can imagine old Tim had met a lot of folks in his life. He always mentioned following the stars to sail home. He seemed like a good man. As we finished the evening with more drink, music and dancing, my mind thought back of what Henry Hook said about old Tim following the stars. I guess he was part of the stars now. An old star? <laughs> hey, that's it. I found the name of my ship. Old Star. In memory of old Tim. <laughs>